We all know that when we breathe in helium, the pitch of our voice increases. But why does this happen? Well, it has to do with the speed of sound traveling through various media. If we look at the composition for air, we'll see that it's mostly nitrogen and oxygen. This gives sound a unique speed when traveling through it. If we replace most of this composition with helium, however, we'll start to change things. Let's take a look at some calculations and see if we can explain why. If we look at the relation between the speed of sound through a given media, we'll come up with the following equation. C equals the square root of gamma times R times T divided by M. Gamma is the adiabatic index, also known as the isentropic expansion factor. It is the ratio of a specific heat of a gas at constant pressure to the same gas at a constant volume. So let's look at our other terms. We also have R, which is the molar gas constant, which comes from the ideal gas law PV equals nRT. T is the temperature given in Kelvin. M is the molar mass. To figure this out for air, we take the relative abundance, or the percent composition, and multiply by the molar mass of each species found in air. When we add all these values together, we'll come up for the total for the molar mass of air. And finally, C ideal is the speed of sound through that media. Now let's plug in some values and see what we get. For diatomic gases, gamma is 7 fifths. R equals 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. Now remember, a joule is a kilogram times a meter squared per second squared. This will be important later on. Our temperature was around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which translates to around 293 Kelvin. After multiplying all the relative abundances by their molar masses, you come up with around 0 0.029 kilograms per mole. Now we begin plugging in our values. 7 fifths for gamma. 8.314 for R, remembering to change joule to kilogram meter squared per second squared, 293 for temperature, and 0 0.0289645 for molar mass. Since we changed our joules to kilograms per meter squared per second squared, all of our units will cancel out, leaving us in meters per second. This gives us a speed of sound in air to be 343.1 meters per second. So now we know the speed of sound traveling through air. Let's take a look at what effect this has on our pitch. When you and your friends talk to each other, you usually use frequencies between around 300 hertz and 3500 hertz, with most of your frequencies falling well below the 1000 hertz line. If we look at the relationship between frequency and speed of sound, we see that it is given by three terms. F, the frequency in hertz, V, the speed of sound in meters per second, and lambda, the wavelength given in meters. Let's say you and your friend are having an abnormally high-pitched conversation and you're speaking around a thousand hertz. Plugging in the 343.1 meters per second we found in the last equation, this allows us to solve for lambda. We find it to be around 0 0.3431 meters, or 34 centimeters. This is also around 13 and 3 eighths inches. So I know you're still asking, what about the helium? We still haven't got to helium. When are we going to get to helium? Well, let's go to the helium. But first, we have to do one more calculation to figure out the speed of sound in helium. Going back to our equation for the C ideal, we're going to replug into this, but this time we're going to use values for helium. Gamma, this time, is going to be 3 fifths. Going to the other terms in our equation, R is still the molar gas constant, 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole, and remember, a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. T is still temperature, and it was done at 293 Kelvin again. A quick glance at the periodic table will tell us that the mass of helium is 0 0.00400 kilograms per mole. Going back to our equation, we plug in our gamma, our R, our T, and our molar mass. Once again everything cancels leaving us in meters per second and after calculating we'll see that the speed of sound in helium is 1007 meters per second. Let's go back to our conversation with our friend. We were producing wavelengths of around 34 centimeters so what will the frequency be in this 
in helium instead of air. Well, plugging in 1,007 meters per second for helium and the 34 centimeters, we'll see that our frequency is now 2,935 hertz. So while we're still producing the same wavelength, our frequency has almost tripled. This is why our voices have a much higher pitch when speaking through helium. So the equations tell us that our pitch should have almost tripled. Let's take a look at the experimental design now. For our experiment, we took a pipe from a pipe organ that was stamped 315 hertz and played it in both air and helium environments. We monitored it using Audacity, which has built-in software to analyze frequency. Under air, we are able to achieve a fundamental frequency of 315 Hz. For helium, we placed the pipe inside a bag, excavated out all the air, filled the bag with helium, and then connected the helium tank directly to the pipe, allowing the helium to flow through the pipe and produce a pitch. For this, we got a fundamental frequency of 780 Hz. Not quite triple, so let's take a look at what could have went wrong here. Going back to our relation, frequency equals the speed of sound divided by lambda. We plug in our values, 315 hertz for frequency and 343.1 meters per second for the speed of sound through air. We can calculate our lambda and we find lambda to be 1.08921 meters. Plugging this wavelength then to the equation and using the speed of sound for helium, we find our frequency should be around 930 hertz. This gives us a relative error of around 16%. If we go back to our equation we used to calculate the speed of sound through helium, we'll notice that C is for an ideal gas. However, helium does not always behave as an ideal gas, especially under real world conditions. If we search through a few sources, we'll see that Georgia State University has reported the speed of sound through helium to be around 927 meters per second. Let's go back to our frequency calculation using this value. Plugging in the values we found, we'll now see that the frequency should be around 851 hertz. This still leaves us with about an 8.3% error. Let's take a look at our experimental design now and see if we can account for this error. We took our pipe from the organ and placed it inside a bag. We then tried to excavate out as much air as possible. However, due to the nature of gases, we most likely still had a fair amount of air left inside the bag. As the helium was pumped through the pipe, we produced our pitch. The pitch increased until it leveled off. At this level, we most likely had our equilibrium ratio of helium to air, and this was the maximum pitch we could obtain. Most people know about helium. Let's talk about a gas most people don't know about. Sulfur hexafluoride is a gas that can actually decrease the pitch of your voice. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the speed of sound equation for sulfur hexafluoride. The gamma for this molecule is 23 divided by 21. This is found by calculating the ratio of CP over CV. R is still 8.314 joules per kelvin mole, T is still 293 kelvin, and the molar mass is 0.146 kilograms per mole. Plugging all these values in, we come up with the value of 135 meters per second. However, this is still for an ideal gas. Experimental data shows it being closer to 151 meters per second. Plugging 151 meters per second into our frequency relation will show us that we should have gotten a frequency of around 139 hertz. The actual frequency we obtained was 145 hertz. This gives us a 4.3% error. To watch a video of us performing this experiment, please check the link below. Otherwise, thank you for watching.